Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn, and if you're new here, welcome to Making with Marilyn. If you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. Now, I recently purchased in Brilliant Software. I purchased Essentials, and I purchased Stitch Artist 2. So I have all the features of Stitch Artist 1 and Stitch Artist 2. I'm learning from a beginner's perspective, and as I learn, I'm sharing what I'm learning with you. Today we're going to talk about envelopes. Have you ever heard of an envelope when it comes to digitizing software or embroidery software? I'm going to show you today where you can download some envelopes to use in your Embrilliant software, and I'm also going to teach you how to make your own envelopes. If this is something you're interested in, stick around. Let's talk about it. An envelope is a nice little feature that you can use to have your letters take on the shape of an object. Notice how the letters follow the curve of the oval, and these letters follow the shape of the heart. That's what an envelope helps you do. You can see that they would be useful for patches, but they're really useful for so much more. In Embrilliance, if you have stitch artists, you can make your own envelopes. I'm going to show you how you can do that in just a little bit, but let's start with the basics of envelopes. If you don't want to learn how to make an envelope, you can use some that Embrilliance has already made for us. To do that, first of all, you need to go to the Embrilliance website. Then you can go up to this search feature. You can click inside there and just type the word envelope. That brought up some different articles, and this is the one that I want right here. So I'm going to say read more. And this article tells you that you can install these envelopes into your library. I've already done that. And then there's a lot of additional information about the envelopes. Once you've installed them into your library, let me show you how you use them. Let's go ahead and click out of that. And in fact, let's just delete everything that we see on my screen. I want to start from scratch. To use those envelopes that I've downloaded from the Embrilliance website, you go right up here where it says Merge Design from the Library. Click on that. And then I have three options right here. I have Embrilliance for various shapes and frames. I can click down here for outlines, and I have various other things. But then finally, notice here I have the envelopes. So if I want to use this pennant envelope, I click on it, and I say OK. Now when I click over here, that word pennant is going to fill. See this inside triangle? That's the envelope. It's going to take on the shape of that envelope. Very, very cute. Let me click on this extent. That really doesn't do anything for me. And then I'm going to click on letters and get rid of it as well. I'm going to put in my own word. So I'm going to go right up here to the A. And to change ABC, you click right over in text. And I'm going to type in Sophie. Now I do feel like all caps is best for these, and I also feel like something very plain and blocky is very good. So I'll hit enter. It changed it to Sophie. When I click outside here, typically this would take the shape of that envelope. But I want to show you it's not going to until I do something else. The reason it doesn't do it is, see the word letters? It needs to match the envelope. So they have this as envelope 16, so this needs to say letters 16. Let me click out of it now, and there it is. When I was looking at these, and first of all, let me get rid of the letters so I can show you. When I was looking at these, it's not as obvious on this one, but I learned a few things about them. The sides of your envelopes need to be really straight up and down. You also have to start the first point of your envelope, and that'll make sense in a minute, in the top left-hand area of where you want your envelope. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute, but for now, let's use another one of theirs. I'm going to go up to Merge Designs from Library, and this time let's do this bridge up. Actually, let's do Falling Banner. I'll click on it. I'll say OK. And it is envelope 2, so whatever letters I put have to say letters 2. If you want to, you can just use their layer, 
And let's retype this to Sophie. I'll hit enter. It changed the word to Sophie. When I click outside of the envelope, it's going to take on that shape. So these are really easy to use and they have a lot of designs, but I wanted to go a step further and I wanted to learn how to make my own. So that's the next step of this video is I want to show you how you can make your own. But we're going to be a little bit more creative. I'm going to bring in a cat. This is a cat that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. Let me click on the cat and change the height of the cat. Let's just go to five inches. Now right now this is just a line. There's no stitches associated with it whatsoever. To make your envelope, you're going to go up to Create. You're going to go over to Draw with Points. And then I'm just going to follow the shape of where I want my envelope, where I want my letters. Remember I said earlier that you put your first point in the top left area of where you want your envelope. And so I'm just going to start right here. All I'm doing is clicking on my mouse. So we're going to add a point. We're going to add a point. With this next point, it's going to actually turn this into a curve. It just does it automatically when you're following a curve. So I click there. I'm going to keep clicking, keep clicking, keep clicking. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's go right here. Now, to get a straight line, I'm holding the command down coming down here to where I want my next point to be. With command held down, I go ahead and click. Now I let up command, and I just start drawing back around my shape. I'm going to follow this leg. I don't want it to be too boring. I want it to be cute. And one thing I'm just now noticing is I'm very close to this. So let's go ahead and click here. Hold the command down so I get a straight line, and I go all the way up to almost where that green point is. I get my crosshairs centered under the green point. With the command still held down, I click. Now this needs to be closed in, and to do that, you go right up here to what looks like an apple or a tomato and click on that. And that's my envelope. Now remember, I was too close to that leg, so let's go ahead and just drag it over a tiny bit. The next step is go ahead and change this to the word envelope. It has to say envelope there. It doesn't matter if it's capital letters, small letters. Now let's add Sophie into the cat. So I click up here on the letter A and I'm going to back over that and in all caps I'm typing Sophie. All right, once I click outside Sophie is going to take the shape of my envelope. Now let's go ahead and put some stitches on the cat. Maybe I want to make an applique out of this. So I click on the cat, click on create, and then we're going to go right over here to the applique stitch. We'll click on that, and then that gives me some options over here. I have different border stitches that I can use, but I definitely prefer the satin one. I can also change my stitch width. And I have a full video on how to do applique step by step. So if you're interested in that, check out the video description and I'll have a link to it down there. Now I like to do a satin stitch, especially on a larger item like this, at a pretty big size because it's more forgiving when you cut away your excess fabric. Now I spent the next few minutes of the video going off on a tangent on how to change thread colors in Embrilliance. Since I want to stay focused on envelopes in this video, I deleted that section. If you want to know how to change the thread colors in Embrilliance, that's included in the applique video that I have linked in the description under this video. With that being said, let's move on. Now there's a little bit about Sophie I don't like. Look how the O goes down too far. To fix that, you click on envelope. So you're fixing your letters or the shape of your letters by going to the envelope. So we're going to click on envelope. Then I would have the option of making the whole thing smaller by dragging this up. That's not really what I want to do and it's still overlapping. So let's go back to envelope, then go up here to the create feature. Once you click on that, all those nodes that I drew, they show up. So I can click on this one. 
Notice these black circles show up. Those change the curvature. So if I click on that one and drag it, it changed the curvature of the letter. That's not really what I want. Let's go back and let's go back again. What I want is I just want to grab this node and I want to drag it up. Now the O is no longer touching. If I want to edit it some more, let's go back to envelope. My nodes are still showing up because I'm in that create feature. And let's drag this up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and drag up the bottom of the P. And let's just drag this one up to be consistent with those two. So here's what it looks like so far. Now I think I'm ready. Whoops, I click off of that. Go back to envelope. Now I think I'm ready to just make the whole thing smaller or shorter. And I think that looks pretty good. Now to get rid of the envelope. I'm not actually getting rid of the envelope. I'm just getting rid of you seeing the envelope. I'm going to click on envelope and I'm going to go right up here where it says lock and hide. I'll click that and when I click back over here it's gone. If I decide that I still need to make some changes to my envelope then I'm going to click on the envelope layer, unlock it, and it shows right back up. But for now let's just go ahead and hide this. So I hope you learned a few things about envelopes, or if you already knew these, maybe you haven't worked with them for quite some time. I just think this is a great feature where you can really customize what you're doing. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next video.